YouTube. It's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here again with another Audacity tutorial. And Audacity, of course, being the program that a lot of you like to use and watch these tutorials. And I get a lot of questions about these Audacity tutorials and comments and stuff like that. And uh, what I wanted to do this uh, for this video was sort of go over uh, some of the things that I get asked uh, pretty much all the time in my other Audacity tutorials. So. Uh, I thought that would be a good thing to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that I wanted to show you here is that I am using Audacity 2.3.2, which as of September 24th, 2019, is the most current version. Uh, so if you're not using 2.3.2, I suggest that you update Audacity before you move forward. And to do that, you can just go to audacityteam.org and uh, download the latest version. Make sure you download it from there, the official website, and not File Hippo or some weird, you know, like mirror or something where you might get some kind of virus or an old version. Uh, just make sure you get it from audacityteam.org, which is the official Audacity website. So 2.3.2, that's what we're on here. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about is my theme and as you'll notice here I have a dark theme so if we just go here to interface in our preferences right here you'll see your theme options and if you switch that back to classic it'll look like the old version of audacity which I still kind of like I'm pretty nostalgic for that one um, so why don't I just leave that there for this tutorial just for fun so um there's the uh, old looking version of audacity and never mind that my uh, text doesn't fill or doesn't fit in my little boxes here that's just having to do with uh, what my system fonts are set at and things like that. I'm running Linux, uh, running elementary OS uh, Juno, which is based on Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. But if you're using uh, Windows or Mac, this all should be the same as long as you are on the most current version, or at least very similar. So, okay. So themes, we went over that. Preferences, interface is where you're going to find themes. And you have classic, dark, light, and high contrast and custom. Custom doesn't seem to do anything other than just make it the default. Maybe there's a text file or something you can edit to fix that, but I've never done it myself. So not really gonna talk about that. Um, just gonna leave it on classic for right now. Okay, so the next thing that I get asked all the time, first off, let me just generate a click track here. Some people say they don't have the rhythm track uh, to generate your click track. Now, you will have that if you update to the latest version. You should have Rhythm Track there. So that's the reason why you don't have Rhythm Track listed in your Generate menu. So I just generated a click track there. And let's hear that back. Okay, so one of the things that I get asked all the time... Well, first off, let me make a new track to record on. I'm going to go Tracks and then Add New Mono Track. And I'm going to click on it there and then rewind back to the beginning. And I have my synthesizer plugged in here. That's that sound right there. So I'm going to play something to this track. I'm going to record something. Let me turn down my mic. Okay, so one of the things that I get asked all the time is a lot of times what will happen, see I just recorded right there, and if I go ahead and try to record like an overdub, I hit record, and it just starts recording right there after what I just recorded. So you can see if I play this back. <laughs> And it just starts recording right there after what I just... Okay, so there's two ways uh, to handle this. Um, the first being, you can just go to tracks. Well, and first off, let me just say, uh, the reason why this is surprising a lot of people is the old version of Audacity didn't do this. Um, every time you would hit record, it would start on a new track and record on, you know, basically the new track every time you hit record. And uh, this got added uh, a few versions ago, and I actually like this feature. Some people don't like it, but for me, it's actually pretty nice, uh, especially if I'm doing like podcasts and things like that. 
Uh, for me, it makes sense, but it doesn't work for everybody and there's ways around this. So the first way around it is just to, well, first off, let me delete that little clip there. What you can do is go to tracks, add new, then mono track, and then click anywhere on that track and then press rewind and then hit record. Blah, 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 blah. And you'll see that it's overdubbing now on a new track. Okay. And let me just rewind. Blah, 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 blah. And you'll see that it's overdubbing now on a new track. Okay. So the second way to handle this problem is you can actually change the default behavior by going into edit and then preferences and then go to recording and then right here under options just check the box that says record on new track and click OK there. Now if I were to just press record without doing anything else it'll start recording on a new track just like it used to in the old versions. La la audacity audacity Okay, so I don't think I need to play that back. I will anyway. La, la, odd. Okay, so you get the idea. So that's how you could take care of that. All right, so another question that I get asked fairly often is, say you recorded a part and you messed up in here and you want to be able to punch in. Punch in means, you know, just record in this one little section uh, where you made the mistake and not erase everything else that you recorded already. So in order to do this, it's pretty simple. All you're going to have to do first, well, first thing I suggest to do is select your whole track and press Control and D on your keyboard. So that way you create a copy of the track. Uh, in case you screw one up, you uh, have another one to go back to. So you can do that and then just mute that original track. You can also click this little arrow right here to make it smaller, just to get out of the way if you want to. And then you're going to highlight the area where you made the mistake. Say I made a mistake right there. Uh, once I highlight the area where I made the mistake, if you need to zoom in, you know, to really see where it is, you can do that too. Uh, let's go in here and get rid of that. Zoom back out. And then what you can do now is just hold down control on your keyboard and press the letter L. And that will silence that area where you made the mistake. Now, it's already going, if I were to hit record right now, it'll just punch in exactly where that little uh, bit of audio or where that section is selected right there but we want a lead-in so what a lead-in is is we want a section uh, for it to play a little bit so I know where the part is coming up so it'll give me time to prepare for the punch in so all I have to do is just drag that selection over a little bit and then maybe drag it over to the edge a little bit like that now if we still have um, well actually no you're going to make sure want to make sure rather that you have uh, the setting set up to record on a new track like I showed you earlier for when you press record for this punch to work. So now if I were to press record so you can see that it punched in right there in that little section. Now if, we're, if I were to rewind and play all this back Okay, so that's how you do a punch in. Pretty easy. And now, if we fix the one that we wanted, we can either just leave this one muted or just delete that track. But it's up to you. Um, I'd just leave it there in case you need it again, personally. Oh, another thing that you could do uh, is something called punch and roll record. Now, what this does, it's a pretty similar idea. Uh, all we have to do in this situation is say we have a section uh, where it was good all the way up to a certain part but then it suddenly uh, just you know we made a mistake so what you could do here is you can go to transport uh, you could select where it's gonna punch in again and just put your cursor there go to transport recording and then punch and roll record and it'll automatically jump back in time then start recording right from this section So that way, um, basically, it just sets a marker where to start recording from and gives you a little bit of a, a, a lead in to prepare for the punch. But this one, unlike the other method, this isn't a punch in, punch out. It basically punches in and then erases the rest of the track. So you definitely want to make sure you copy the track first 
uh, before you do this method. Um, so yeah, those are the main things that people uh, keep asking me about. And I thought that I would make this uh, little video about it because uh, rather than just keep answering the same comments, uh, I figured it'd be better just to do a video like this. So anyway, hopefully you guys learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if the video uh, was helpful to you, let me know by clicking thumbs up or, or leaving a comment or subscribing. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day. Oh, hey, I also wanted to mention, uh, if you get a chance, check out the link down below for my album, Minnesota, which is on 180-gram vinyl that you can see right here. Uh, I recorded this record a couple of years ago and uh, ran a Kickstarter campaign to help me press the vinyl, and it came out really, really good, I think. I played all the instruments on it, uh, drums, acoustic guitar, synthesizer, bass, uh, as well as some other uh, percussion and things like that. And uh, yeah, if you get a chance, it's on sale right now for $10, free shipping in the U.S. and cheap shipping everywhere else. And I actually mastered this album in Audacity, too, so uh, just a little side note there. Anyway, if you get a chance, the link's down below. And once again, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day.